you guys. Today's tutorial is the first one in the Backpack Bash Bonanza. This is going to be week one of several weeks of backpack tutorials and getting us started is the cutest, the cutest little bag. So this is called the Snack Pack. It's my dog under my desk. Um, it was originally designed to be a thermal, like temperature controlled bag that a kid can carry. It's not it, sorry. Their snacks in their drinks. It fits like a mini water bottle, uh, applesauce packs, bags of popcorn, you know, all that. But it's, I mean, you can see it's like the size of my hand. So it's roughly eight and a half inches tall by five and a half wide with about two and a half um, depth here. But it is just the most darling bag ever. I made one for myself several months ago um, and I carried it. It was my everyday little bag and I was, you know, I added the zipper and then I made the strap go to a crossbody. So that was the crossbody. And then if you pulled on the straps, it would go to a backpack. Um, this wasn't the best design elements, which is why I did not replicate it in today's. Um, in the future, I may revisit it, but you know, it's really not that hard if you want to figure this out. You just put a little strip here and then you put your straps through here. So you can figure that out. Don't ask me to make a video or you can ask, but I probably won't make a video. Not for a while anyways, but anyways, I digress. But it, yeah, so I carried this little guy all the time everywhere and I loved it. It's the perfect size for me. I do not carry a lot of stuff in my bag. And so I loved this little size. That being said, of course, it was designed with kids in mind. So I made one for my niece. It's going to be her third birthday in March. And so I got her her first like camelback water bottle. And it has little narwhals on it. Where are the narwhals? Oh, there it is. Little mermaids and narwhals. And so I just had to make like a unicorn backpack to match. And I figured if she has water bottles, she needs something to carry it in. So the snack pack was born. Now, the amendments that I made to this pattern, I omitted the insole bright or the thermal batting. Um, all I did was Decaville light on my cotton. So my front panel and my back panel here. Everything else is no interfacing. I created this little area here because the pattern is not written with actual straps that you that a kid can use. So I wanted it to be a functional backpack for my niece. So I went ahead and I made this. Now this measurement here, and again, all these updates will be in the description box too. But so this little anchor, this I call it a strap anchor, but these are also strap anchors. So these are like lower strap anchors, top strap anchor. So this top strap, strap anchor is two inches wide by seven inches or seven inches wide by two inches tall. And then it's folded in on itself to create a one inch strip. My little hang loop here is two inches wide by six inches, or six inches wide by two inches. Sorry. I'm so excited over this backpack. You can tell I'm stumbling. Um, and then the lower strap anchors here are two and a half inches long by two inches wide. No, by one and a half inch wide. They're 0.75 inches wide after they're folded. Um, I use these little O-rings as my strap adjust, or my strap anchor. Um, I used half inch slides to make my straps adjustable. And then to make your straps, if you have said child or yourself in front of you, you would want to measure from the top of the shoulder down to where you want the backpack to hit, the bottom of the backpack to hit on their body. Um, my niece is not here, so I just kind of looked at my ruler and estimated. Um, that being said, I have no idea if it'll work. I like to think it would, but I did my straps at 23 inches long by one and a half, one and a half? Yeah, sorry, by one and a half inches wide. So 23 inches long by one and a half inches wide and then I did a tri-fold, just like I do on my Serona and my Paradigm straps. So I'm hoping that fully extended, she should have more than enough room. And I mean, I can put it on my back, obviously it like sits way up here, but I can put it on my back. So I would assume, she's just a tiny girl. So I would assume that this would work for her. Um, I got these really lovely tags from Heartwood Hide. I love that teal. Oh, uh, let's see. Oh, I used this moon. I think it's the Moon Glow vinyl. I bought it forever ago, but this is, it's like a iridescent vinyl. It's a softback vinyl. I got that from um, So Hungry Hippie. 
And then I did a little tag, one of Lauren's tags in here. I did the You Matter woven tag. And then the print, I'm not sure. I've just had this in my stash forever, but it, look at it. It's just so cute. It's got little unicorns. Um, zipper tape is from Zipper Valley. And I would imagine that my pull is from Zipper Valley as well. I did an oversized donut pull because I figured her little tiny fingers that that would be helpful for her. But I think that those are my only amendments. Um, I, I lied. Um, the main panel I changed, which I go over in the video, so you will see that. But usually the this side piece, the front piece and the bottom is all the same pattern piece, but I amended mine to where I would have a full court gusset. So again, I go over that in the video and I show you, but yeah, so that's it. Um, sorry, it's a really long intro, but I hope that you enjoy this sewing pattern and stick around because the next several weeks I will have lots of different backpack patterns um, ranging in size and ranging in aptitudes. And so, yeah, I hope that you hang out for the backpack bash bonanza. Yeah, happy sewing. Okay, so I have the back panel here. This is what I'm gonna work on first. So I would need to create a strip because the pattern does not include that in it. It, the pattern doesn't have instructions for like actual working backpack straps for children. So I'm just kind of winging this as always. Um, but so my idea is I'm gonna put a strip of cork across the back of this cotton and then in it, I'm gonna have my little hang loop and then I'm gonna have my little straps, just like a normal backpack pattern has. So I'm just gonna, you know, take that knowledge that I have from the past and try to apply it here. So my cotton is lined with Decabo Light. Oh, it looks like I ironed a string in there. And so I'm going to take my anchor. I'm going to call this the strap anchor for all intents and purposes. This is what's going to be anchoring the straps to the back panel. So I'm going to fold my anchor in half lengthwise, just like you do for every other strap. And because I cut it two inches wide, when I fold it in on itself, it's gonna fold to one inch wide, which I think will be a nice size for this back panel here. And then of course, you can mark your center line so that way you know exactly where you're folding. Keep everything nice and even. I'm just folding up to this line that I just made. Now it's not super imperative that my lines are perfect because it's going to be hidden on the inside and this will not actually be a strap, but you know, you want it to be as square as possible. But so this is the final size and I'm gonna lay mine. Now I'm just gonna try it out first. I'm not putting anything in place for good yet. But I think I'm gonna put it at one and a half inches down from this top center. And what that does is it gets it out of this harsh curve here. So when I'm attaching the back to the main, that way it keeps it out of this harsh curve, but it's not super low that when my niece is wearing the backpack, it kind of falls forward. Cause you know, where the straps come out, if you have the straps down here, then the bag is gonna have a natural inclination to lean forward from this point of contact, at least in my head, that's what I imagine it will do. So I think I'm gonna try to keep it, you know, a little higher up. So that when the straps are coming out here, it doesn't sit funky on her tiny back. So, okay, there's that. Now I wanna put a little hang loop on here as well. So then, you know, when my sister is hanging it up, or I imagine, I don't know, shoot, it might end up on the floor for all I know. But when it does get hung up, I wanna have a place for it to be, sorry, I'm having a hard time with my words right now. Basically, I wanna hang loop so that it can hang up. 
Um, but as I was saying that, I was realizing this might not be long enough because this will just be a tiny little loop. Like it won't fit over a doorknob, which is kind of where I'm thinking it might end up. But, you know, we're just going to roll with it. If it. You know, my sister can use the straps to put it up over a doorknob. Oh, I forgot to mark my center here. Sorry, that was a lot of rambling. But anyway, so I'm going to make the hang loop. I'm going to start by making it the same way that I made my little anchor over here. I'm going to mark in the center. And then my idea is to create a rolled handle effect so that the loop is thin, so that it's a half inch wide, which is going to be the same width as the straps. So it'll all fit together. It'll, it, I'm imagining that it'll look more cohesive, but so, you know, you fold in toward the center. I like to leave that little gap there. So that when you fold, it lays nice and flat. So something else that I am mulling over in real time is this part down here where we attach it into the strap anchor under this guy is still going to be one inch wide, which that I feel like looks okay. It actually kind of looks kind of cute. Let's see. Okay, we're going to roll with it. Okay, so I did my half inch fold in toward the center and then folded it. And I think I'm going to make marks one inch and that's going to tell me where to stop sewing so that I can lay the bottom open ends flat to go inside the strap anchor. So one inch there. And then now we need to fold and make our straps. So I'm going to make these straps the same way that I make any of my thin half inch straps. I'm just going to fold it in thirds. And I am just going to eyeball it because I feel confident that I can make these with my eyes closed at this point. I've made so many. So I'm going to fold my straps all the way up. Now for the strap length, I just kind of had to guess. Um, I did some very, very light Googling. And basically what I found out is that you want the straps to be long enough, which, you know, breaking news here. It actually makes so much sense, but you want it to be as long as the child's shoulder to their lower back measurement. But because said child is not here, I cannot measure that. Um, that being said, this strap is way longer. This is probably as long as my back. So I figured if I make it longer and then I can put a slide strap slide on here, then, you know, my sister can adjust it for my niece's back length. And then also if my little niece decides to keep the backpack and use it later, she can extend it. So she'll be able to take this into, you know, when she gets older, I don't really know. I don't know. She's probably going to be tall at some point, but right now she's still a wee little sprout. So I think I can get away with guesstimating, but if you have the child with you, or if you're making this backpack for yourself, just take into account your strap length because Mine is a total guess. Okay, so now I just need to go over to my machine and I'm gonna stitch from the the one inch line to the other one inch line right there. And I'm gonna back stitch really well. That's gonna be a high stress point once I spread these bottom sections out. I'm gonna stitch up both sides of my straps and then I'm gonna stitch just along one long edge of my anchor here. All right, so I am using text 70 i'm on text 70 from way whack oh, gosh i just saw an instagram post explaining how they say their name and i can't remember but i was definitely saying it wrong so it's not way whack wow walk i'm pretty sure something like that anyways that's where i got that um i'm using a size 18 needle and a size 4 stitch length So just along the bottom of my little strap anchor there. Okay, just a little 
the straps here. Now I like to start sewing my straps on the side that's open so then I can take the clips off and then just jam it back up that other side. Really, you don't even have to stitch up both long edges as long as you stitch closed this open edge. There we go. And I'm just going to repeat on the remaining strap. Shocked I didn't run out of bobbin on that. Today is my lucky day. Okay, see you back over on the other side. All righty then. So I have my little guy all done up. Here is my hang loop. You could see where I stopped and left it open on either end. And then my two straps. And I was just thinking about it. And I made my sister a backpack. I don't know, several years ago. And she is the roughest person on stuff. And I know I'm making this for her daughter, but if genetics are real, I'm going to go ahead and uh, assume that Juno might be a little rough on this. So I'm going to add a couple of rivets here, right where my, oh, come here, you little guy, right where my stitching ends. You can see like my stitching ends there. So I'm adding a rivet just so that if, for whatever reason these stitches pop that the hang loop won't that it'll stay put all right so that's a little bit of added security there and then so now what i need to do i'm going to add a strip of double stick tape here oh wait why did i I'm realizing now that I shouldn't have done that bottom strip of sewing. I should have done it here. Ay -ay -ay. All right, so I took those stitches out and now I'm gonna add some double stick tape here across the bottom. I don't know what happened to my other roll. It's right here somewhere. It's funny how stuff disappears so quick, huh? Okay, so I'm gonna do layer right here on top. I'm also going to do one right down the center. This is not the easy tear kind. Oh, there's the easy tear kind. I need scissors. Here we go. Oops. And then I'm also going to do a third right here along the bottom because I want my straps 
and my hang loop to stay in place. So I want to make sure that everything is nice and secure. Now, if you had half inch tape, obviously that would make this a lot easier, but I'm out. Okay, so I'm going to mark my center on both my anchor here. and my panel. Okay. So now, like I said, I'm gonna put my strap anchor. So what I'm doing is I'm lining up this top edge on a straight edge on my ruler. And I have the one piece of tape that's pulled off I have that on the bottom and then I'm lining up the top of my strap anchor on the one and a half inch line. So one and a half inches from the top here and then it's still open down there or up here rather, sorry. Words. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Why does it look crooked? All right. Oh, oh, good. All right. Just a little optical illusion happening. Okay, so my thought, this tape, I took it all the way to the edge. It keeps getting stuck to the table. So my thought is to put the straps first right here along the center and then put my hang loop straddling the straps. So I'm going to take my straps. Now I have the one section here where I came down, sewed across the bottom and then sewed back up, whereas this side is just open. So that's my more raggedy side. This is the side that I'm going to insert into my strap anchor like so. And another thing I'm paying attention to is this seam here, this folded or not the folded edge, the raw edge, I'm putting to where it's going to go toward the center of the bag. I'm going to peel off my other tape, but I'm going to be careful oops, and try not to let it stick because I want to be able to slide my straps down. And then so I'm going to find that center mark that I made that has disappeared. I don't. Okay, there's my center. I can see it on my folded. So I'm going to lay my strap right along that center line and I'm sticking it down at least a half of an inch because I want to be able to put a rivet there after I sew across it. And now I'm taking this one as well and that raw edge facing it here toward the center and I'm going to slide it half inch down and lay it right next to this other strap. So it should look like that. And so I can feel how far they come down and that's at least a half an inch. Okay, and then the idea is to take my hang loop and I want the nice folded edge of my hang loop to face toward the work, toward the table here. So then at the end, when the bag is all done, from the front of the bag, you see the nice folded edge. So I'm gonna carefully fold this open and slide it down like so that it butts up right next to the other cork piece here, the other, um, or the strap, not the other. I don't know why I keep saying other. And then this side, I am gonna lay like that. So this is what it should look like if you're following my steps. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my machine, I'm gonna stitch across here and across this bottom, and I'm gonna add some stay stitches in through here just to make sure everything stays nice and sturdy and then I'm also going to put a rivet in. Check my bobbin thread before I get started on this other side. Okay, I have enough. I want to make sure I don't run out right in the middle of sewing all that stuff together. There we go. Okay, so very, very carefully. 
stitch along the top here. painful than I expected. I always get really intimidated doing stuff like that, but it looks cute. And now it's nice and sturdy because it has all of those ends in there. So now we're going to go over and just add some rivets here just for super duper added security. The cutest little hang loop. It's so tiny. All right. So I have just some fraying thread here. I'm just going to burn that out of the way. And then now I'm just gonna eyeball it, but if you want to, you can totally measure it, go for it, you do you. But I'm just gonna add some holes here and hope that they're even. Oops, that one's a little off. Probably go back in on that guy. Okay, toss a couple of rivets in here. Now these are seven, seven by six, I believe. So seven millimeter cap by six millimeter post. Oof, look how straight that is. Don't like to toot my own horn, but toot, toot. Now on my other snack pack that I made for myself, oops. see I made it out of all cork. It was a little rough here on this flipped edge, which is why I'm doing cotton for my nieces, just because I haven't really mastered top stitching cork on a curve like that. I just don't really feel like messing with it today. But this is what I came to show you. I added a little tiny zipper along the back and so that's something else that you can consider doing if you want an extra little pocket because there is no pocket inside. I just left mine open down in there. And so if you need like a place to put chapstick or sunscreen or what have you, this little area works well for that. Um, so I just added a zipper overlay just like I do on all of my other projects and added a pocket in there. All right, now let's press these rivets into place and keep removing. Okay, so now um, just because I'm gonna trim this down so I can see what she looks like all done. Here we go. So I'm thinking that I'm going to add my little tag back here because this is my front panel. Oops. And I don't know that I want to mar the surface or like the, the front panel with a tag. I was considering doing it here, but I don't trust myself to get it centered on all the sides. And then this is the bottom. So I think I'll just add my little tag right in this area. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. This tool is from Heartwood and Hyde. It's a label guide. So you can see my labels are two inches wide by one inch tall. And it has these holes in all the corners and then also right there in the center. So you can line up where you want your tag to go. I'm actually gonna look at, so I've got some other tags here. I have blue, I feel like that's a little much. I just need to go with the old trusty, the old natural quartz, if I can find one. Oh, I forgot I got these. Heartwood and Hyde cut out some of my logo. That was cute. Oh, look, I have one old wooden. This is what I used to use a long time ago. Etched wooden tags. That one's kind of cute. Should I do that one? Should I do this one? Where are all my 
my toes up. Oh, it's annoying. Oh, you're there. Okay. I knew I had some. I just bought some. I think I might. Oh, I don't know. All right. I'm going to go with this one. Sorry. That was a. It took me a while. Oh, I see. So that's why they, I was wondering why they looked so different than the tags I normally get. But it's because they're not the same measurements. So these tags that they made for me, and I didn't send them anything. She just, Jade just cut these for me very nicely. Very gratuitous of her. But so they are a quarter inch shorter than my other tags. And they're the same height, but yes, that's why. So visually it just looks so different for me or to me for some reason. But okay, we're gonna do one of their tags. And I like to just put a strip of tape to hold it in place. And then what's nice about this is that it you can measure how far down. So like I'm gonna measure using the measurements provided a half an inch down. So then I know that when I put my tag, or so then I know that, I don't know what I'm trying to say, geez, never mind. But I, what I'm trying to get at is it's nice that they provide those measurements. I'm just going to do it like this. Okay, cute. So I'm just going to go and top stitch around this and I will be right back. Okay, so now we just need to attach the straps. We need to make them adjustable and they need to attach down here at the bottom. So then that would complete the back panel. But in order to actually make them attach, we need lower strap anchors as well. So I'm going to cut out. I want them to be a half inch wide, I think. Yeah, so I'm going to do two. I'm going to do three inches tall by one and a half, actually. I'm just gonna make them 0.75 inches wide. It'll make it so much easier. I think. It will, okay. So two point, or 1.5 inches wide by three tall. You're cutting out two of those. And then we're gonna fold these in half long ways, just like all the others. And then we will loop them around. I have these cutesy tootsy little rings. So I think that those will match. Um, I would have done smaller hardware, like a D ring or even a rectangle ring, but I don't have them. I don't have rectangle rings in this size. I have these guys, strap adjusters, but I don't have any other half inch hardware. So we are gonna work with what we've got. Okay, so just like before, why I put the tape so far away from the edge on this one. Ding dong moment. Now I could have cut it out 
or I could have folded it into thirds and then it would have been the same width as the strap. But the problem is then it's double folded and you have to, you would have to sew through that down here. And I just feel like that would be way too much. So I just want a single fold so that it is more flexible and folds easier. And it's not, it's just not as thick. Okay, so I'm gonna pop to the machine really quick. Um, you know what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna go stitch all around all four sides. I'll be right back. All right, so I got these back just like that. Easy peasy. And then I'm just gonna loop them around a clip because I am doing all of this on the fly. If you haven't picked that up yet, um, we are just learning as we go. It's interesting when I make videos like this because I'm figuring it out in real time, which obviously you are not seeing, it's not live, but in my real time. And then at the very end, I go back and in my intro, I summarize the changes that I made. But I do feel like sometimes these videos can be a little confusing. And so for that, I apologize. Um, but you guys are a good bunch. You've been with me long enough to know how I work, which is a little crazy. Okay, so I'm going to put these guys, I don't want them right here because again, that harsh curve, that's gonna make it such a pain in the butt. Now on my other one, you can see, I just put them right here in the bottom. You can see I still, I had a hard time on that curve there. Oopsies. Um, but so I think I'm gonna try to just put them coming straight up from the bottom. Alternatively, you could come out the side. The good thing is that using a ring like this, it's not gonna matter because once this is on, it's gonna sit exactly how it needs to. It's not gonna be constricted by the shape of the hardware, which is nice. But I think it'll look cute and it'll serve the same purpose from the bottom as it would the side. So let's see, let me look at it from my point of view. Side. I'm gonna do it from the bottom. Executive decision. And then to hold these in place, I'm just gonna add a little bit of tape here, which I should have done before. Drewzy, don't you do it. The straps are enticing her on that side of the table over there, and she's just right there looking at these straps. She wants to hunt them. Don't do it, Drewzy. Drewzy. Okay, so just a little piece of tape. Whoops to hold this and then I will tell you the placement in just a minute. So if I'm centering this guy, so I'm going to put my straps. So here's my curve. I have my back panel centered. Um, and I'm going to put the outside of my strap right here on the one inch mark on both sides. And then what we need to do to complete our adjustable straps is you take your hardware, and now it's gonna be a little bit wonky because the strap is already attached. Most of the time you would do this prior, but there's kind of no real good time to do it when you're working within these confines. So I have my open edge. I'm gonna slide it up and over that middle bar, that adjuster bar. So it's gonna look like that. And then you need to loop it down through your bottom anchor. Whatever your hardware is, it needs to come through your anchor and back up. So it's making a big loop-de-loo right now. And then this is where it gets tricky. You need to loop this edge back up and around this adjuster bar on the inside. So how I like to do that is I like to add a little bit of slack here. I'm going to pull it up and you really want to make sure that nothing is twisted. That's a big part of it. And so see, I went back Jersey Queen. I don't need your help. So I went back on the top of the bar. And then I'm going to slide it back over the bar. So hopefully you can see what see. So I encased that middle bar there. And then as adeptly as you can, 
collectors he quit. You need to add a rivet right here to hold this in place. It also doesn't help that everything is so tiny. Normally I run into this when I'm making a range backpack, but it's bigger. Like the strap is bigger, the sizing is bigger, the strap is longer, so it just makes it easier. But okay, I'm gonna leave that for now and I'm gonna get this strap going and then I'll just go back and rivet those rivets down. So again, just to reiterate, keep your tri slide the bar in the center. You're gonna go up and over it. Come here, up and over. Slide her on down. Loop from the top. So you're not gonna go under like that. You're gonna go from the top. And then add your slack and encase that middle bar again. I remember the first time I had to figure this out, I think I broke my brain. It took me a long time to figure out. But really, once you master how to make straps adjustable, it's, you, you get better at figuring it all out. Okay. Just my fingers seem so big for this little area. There we go. I can't imagine how people make like Barbie clothes and, you know, really, really tiny things. I don't even know. I'm just like too much of a bull in a china shop, I think, to do that. All right. And then we need to press those rivets into place. And then you can take the slack out. And then there you go. You have just a little teeny tiny backpack back. And then so fully adjusted. The straps are like that. So I hope that that's enough. It better be. If not, Juno can carry it like a purse. Frizzy's here and she's being annoying. Alert the presses, what's new? Um, so I added a little rivet here to hold the O-ring in place and then I stitched these down, but I realized something else that I should have told you. So I need to pick these out because what happened was I didn't lay my straps correctly. And it's a quick fix, but the straps should be coming up through the hang loop because see what happens right now is if you're holding it by the hang loop, then the straps are in the way. So I need to pull, Drizzy, if you don't quit, she is being sassy tonight. So I need to pull these stitches out. Of course, I added like a lot of good stitches and then slide my straps through the hang loop. Okay, so they're like this, which is how I did it. You gotta take the end and pull it through the loop, like so. So then when you're holding onto it, it lays properly. And then yeah, so you put it back at that one inch mark, like so. Every time I say like so these days, I think of Tabitha. I don't know. So I follow a lot of vegetarian and vegan people on my Instagram and y'all might be familiar with her, but Tabitha, she's so sweet, but she always says like so like that. And that's every time I say like so, now I think about her. Um, okay, so now I have it ready to go and I will just go and add my stay stitches there. And then this back panel will be done. Um, so I just realized I didn't do like a materials overview. So I figured before I move any farther along in the pattern, I will do that. So of course we have our back that is now complete. So this, the addition of this strip is not in the pattern. Um, this hang loop might be in the pattern, but I'm not sure, but I did mine at six inches by two and then folded it. You know, you just watched all that. And then my straps, I did 23 inches long, but again, prefacing that with, that is a total guess. If you're making this with somebody in mind, measure their back. 
Um, so this is my front panel. Now I wanted my sides and my bottom to be cork to, to coordinate with my zipper panel, which, so this is going to go on top like that. Well, it's going to be like that, but so this will be the front of my bag and this will be the sides and bottoms. So front is the unicorn print sides and bottom. And then this will be my back. So really straying from the norm here, you know, usually I do all cork everything, but on this one, because it's for my niece, this print is just so darling. And um, truth be told, I didn't have enough to cut the entire thing out of all unicorns while it was in the proper direction, which is another reason why I chose to do the accents as shown. Now, the only thing that I did was I cut out the pattern piece, which is, it looks just like this. And then I folded the paper wings in and then I added a quarter inch and sewed and then flipped and top stitch. So you can see that's what it looks like from the back. But so this piece is the same exact measurement as the pattern piece itself. Um, and then I have my zipper gusset here. And then for the inside, I'm doing this holographic mermaidy vinyl. It's soft back. I got this from So Hungry Hippie a really long time ago, and it's really nice and flexible. But the reason I'm doing it, A, is because it coordinates perfectly with the unicorns, but also because then the interior will be waterproof. And I, the, the little bit that I know about kids is that uh, they are messy as I'll get out. And so I figured something wipeable would be nice. And then I haven't tested it, but I'm pretty sure that this could be washed, especially since it will be on the interior. It will be protected if my sister washes this in the washing machine and then air dries it. I think it'll be fine. So I'm doing the entire inside with the vinyl. So hopefully I don't kick myself in the butt for this. Um, it's been a long time since I've worked with this vinyl, but like I said, it is nice and soft. So I'm hoping that it works well. Um, I do want to make another backpack out of all this and just, I want to quilt it. I think that'll be super rad. But so that is also on my to-do list. So, okay, we have all of our materials here. Um, this cotton is coated or interfaced with Decaville Light. As you can see, my cork is not interfaced at all. And I chose not to interface this vinyl as well. So this bag, once it's broken in, is not going to have a whole lot of structure, but I'm going in knowing that. But so if you want a more structured bag or a bag that will hold its shape over a long period of time, you need to plan accordingly and possibly interface everything with Decaville or foam. Um, I know in the pattern as it's written, because it is intended to be a thermal lined bag, it does have like a fleece insole bright. So that helps that shape, that helps hold the shape in the original pattern. Sorry, brain fart. Um, I have my zipper here. I'm doing a number five zipper. And then I found a pull that has a nice big chunky pull here um, because little tiny fingers, I think that that would be helpful. And so the next step, since we have our back panel complete, is we need to create our zipper gusset. Yeah, gusset, geez, God. I'm having a hard time with words today. So I'm gonna mark my centers of these just by folding in half and then making little tiny snips in everything. So in my zipper, in my lining, and in my exterior here. And I'm not doing big snips, just little tiny ones so that way I can find my centers easily. So you can see right here and right here. And then of course, all the measurements for all this stuff is in the pattern, so if you have any questions about like zipper length and all of that, go ahead and reference the pattern. And then of course my little updated, my update additions will all be listed in the description box below. Okay. And so I'm gonna grab my one eighth tape. Here it is. Now this is the easy tear tape from the sewing room in Garner, North Carolina. And I'm gonna put this right on the edge of my cork here. And so I'm gonna lay my zipper tape right side together with my exterior cork. And I'm gonna take care to match up this middle snip. 
and then lay my edges. Okay, so there we go. One half of the sandwich. And then we're just gonna repeat those steps and put the lining in place. And same thing. Okay, so this one's going right side down, but same thing, match up that middle notch. We are good to go. So I'm going to go to the machine, and because this vinyl is really soft and a tad stretchy, I'm going to sew on my cork side, and I'm just going to stitch... I'm going to line up the edge of my zipper foot and that's about a quarter inch. And then that leaves like a nice, probably like a three sixteenths of the zipper tape showing. And that's enough of the zipper tape to have a pop of color, but not so much that it's going to throw off the measurements. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. See you over there. Oh, almost fell out of my chair. Is it prior planning prevents piss poor performance? Sorry, I should have had my needle threaded before I started the camera, but I didn't. All right, here we go. And then I am just going to fold over my exterior, like always. The pattern might call for both to be flipped, but I am not going to do that. I'm just going to stitch my exterior down. And there we go, cutie tootie. I was just thinking you could even do like some quilting lines here to stitch all of this together and then you would have a nice taut inside, which I might do. I don't know, I'm gonna think about that. Okay, I decided to do it. I added some quilting. And the reason I did that is because I think once the bag is done, it'll give the gusset some more structure because they are sewn together. So there. Okay, I need to add my pull. And I'm just gonna do one zipper pull, but you can obviously add two if you want. I mean, it is your bag, you do whatever you want. But before I add the pull, where'd it go? Here it is. I'm gonna make a couple marks on my zipper. So in the pattern, Erin has you mark from the edge of your panel here. Gosh, I smashed my finger today on my sink and it's so sore. I just hit it again on my ruler, sorry. Um, so you are going to mark from the edge of your zipper here. You mark three eighths and then three quarters. And so you're making both of those marks from the edge of your panel, not from each other. So here, so the first one is three eighths from the edge of this panel, and then I measured and did three quarters as well. Let me do the same on this side. And now these lines are gonna be the marks where we start and stop sewing because the construction of the front panel to the gusset is quite ingenious and it creates this cool folded edge here, which is what made me fall in love with this pattern. It can be a little bit tricky. I had um, a little bit of a hard time the first time I did it on that cork bag, but you know, as with most things, practice makes progress. Okay, so I'm gonna oh, put my pull on if I can. Okay, so that's what we have right now. Um, if you want to, you can put some stay stitches here at the beginning and the end. I'm just gonna add a piece of tape because 
Yeah, because that's what's right here. And this is the extra sticky tape, so hopefully this will stop it if it gets to the point where it's getting down to the end of the zip tape here. Okay, and now the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna attach our zipper gusset to our main panel, the front here. So I need to find my center on this top ear area. Area, I don't know what I was gonna say there. This top area. So I'm just gonna do the fold. Might as well, I don't even remember if I'm gonna need this, but I might as well snip the bottom too while I'm here just in case. And then, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna match these notches, the one on the zipper tape and the one here on the panel. And we are going to attach our gusset all the way around. And Erin tells you to baste it into place, but because I have tape, I'm just gonna use this. So I'm just gonna apply the tape as close to the edge as possible. And if it's not laying down flat, that's fine because as soon as you pull the paper off, the tape will lay because it'll stick to itself. And this is annoying. My cotton is coming unstuck from my Decaville, which is what we don't want, especially I just laid the tape. That's annoying. We're just gonna roll with it, hopefully doesn't give me any guff. Okay, so now I'm gonna peel the paper. And then I'm gonna lay my zipper right side down. And now it might be easier to unzip your zipper like that, so then this top piece is way more flexible. And then of course, if you need to, you can make some notches in your zipper tape. to help ease in this curve here. And then the goal is for this line that we marked to be even with the top of this pattern piece over here. I say the goal because mine's not exactly right there, but I think it'll be okay. But we'll find out, won't we? And they're both the same amount below, so I'm not going to mess with it. I'm just going to leave it like it is. I'm gonna to toss a couple clips so you can see my Decaville came unstuck. I'm just gonna put a little piece of tapey tape here. It's like my iron is not heated up. See, this is why I don't like to use cotton on the outside of my bags because it's just annoying. I like cork. Cork just stays put. You don't need to fuss with it. Okay. We'll make it. We'll make it. All right, put some of that there to hold it. And then now what we need to do, because I'm not stitching this down, I'm going to lay my interior main panel and create the zipper sandwich like that. And because my interfacing is coming unstuck, I'm just going to put the double stick tape on. Gosh, yeah, I think that this vinyl quilted with some foam would be such a cool looking bag, backpack, bag, whatever. I don't really work with vinyls and stuff a lot because, you know, they're polymer based. And I know that some of the corks have, you know, the, the backing is with, made with a polyester, but I try to avoid using plastics and things like that as much as possible. But sometimes I just have to let myself, you know, 
given. I finally got my hands on some of the gummy vinyl. I'm excited to try that out on something. Think about making a wallet with the gummy vinyl because then it would be like semi-transparent. I thought that might be cool. Okay, so now I'm just gonna carefully, uh-oh, very carefully because I just realized I didn't mark my center. Let's try. There we go. So I'm just gonna carefully line up my centers here and lay this on top. And now you'll notice how the zipper wants to pooch up like that, but just push it down. You just want to be really careful there aren't any folds in your zipper. So you want to push it down, just make sure it doesn't fold in on itself and create a harsh fold that you'll sew over because then you'll be sad. So many is walking down my road with their radio on. It's so loud I can hear it in here. That's wild. Oh, so can the dog. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to go to the machine and we're gonna stitch all the way around our pieces. 